We don't want to forget about our chat, which is a fortnightly chat with the Dubbo Regional uh, Mayor, Matthew Dickerson. Good morning to you. You were at the show all the weekend. What a fantastic event. Yeah, I actually haven't heard the final numbers. I was there on Saturday. It looked very busy. The numbers were marginally down on last year when I spoke to the show organisers on Saturday afternoon, but it looked like there were going to be a lot more people coming through. And last year was an unbelievable year, record year ever last year. So I think the numbers would have been pretty good in the end. And it looked like lots of activity, lots of things happening. It looked like a Dubbo show. Absolutely. And a little bit of wet stuff doesn't hurt anyone. That's what uh, the Royal Agricultural Shows are all about. That's right. That used to be my thing growing up. It used to be it was raining, the Dubbo show was happening, they went hand in hand. So as far as I remember, it was always raining at the Dubbo show. It gives us an opportunity to put on our jeans and our, uh, you know, uh, overcoats and our boots. It's uh, the only way to do it. I know uh, Marie Pobshire, who has crowned the uh, Zoe FM Dubbo Young Woman, just mentioned that Wes was quite happy with the numbers. We caught up with Terry Wiltshire from 123 Ticks on Saturday, who said uh, plenty of people coming through the gates. Some of the people using those diner, discover and parent vouchers only paid a dollar to get in or something. Yeah, yeah, they're quite good, aren't they? So if you've got them out there still, use them before they expire. Yeah, that's it. Hey, public comments closing at five tonight for the Dubbo Regional Council draft budget delivery program and operational plan. Matt, how important is this? Yeah, very important. And we've only got about 46, 48 submissions so far. So I'd like to see more than that. Obviously, we really want to see the community engage. And those numbers are pretty good. It means that there is certainly some interest in there. People are certainly commenting. I haven't looked at any of those comments yet because obviously I wait till the final submissions come in and then go through and look through them all. But councillors do read them and every year that I've been involved with the budget we've made some tweaks and changes to the budget based on the feedback we get from the community so don't think that there's no point putting it in or they won't read it we do definitely read them all and where possible obviously someone can put a submission and say please make our rates zero dollars well we can't satisfy every request but if we see a reasonable request there and something makes sense and the community wants it then that's the whole idea of the submission process. Because this draft budget, what does this and operational plans, does this cover the next 12 months? Yeah, that's the idea. Obviously, there's forward planning out further than that. But what we really focus on is what's going to happen from the 1st of July this year. And it's not about creating money or making money appear out of nowhere. It's about here's the amount of money we've got. What's the best way to spend that amount of money? Some people might prefer more money spent on footpaths. Well, tell us that. Some people might prefer more money spent on sporting facilities or more money spent on certain things. And keep in mind that it is a give and a take. So if you want more money spent on certain things, you don't have to do it. But it's obviously a good idea to say, well, spend some more money on this particular part of the community and spend less on that. Because at the end of the day, we're always trying to balance that budget, trying to get it so that it comes out at zero dollars. We don't want to be in debt. We don't want to have a deficit at the end of the financial year. But we also don't need money left over because obviously we need to spend all the money the community gives us. Do the draft documents also touch on that rate variation that you've uh, put through to IPART? Yeah, so that's the really confusing part for this budget. There's actually two budgets out there. There's one budget at the 0.7% rate increase that IPART allowed for councils across the state. So we had to prepare a budget based on that because that's what IPART said we could increase the rates by. But they've also said if we put a submission in and we get broad community support for a rate increase at 2.3%, then they'll consider that and they may may well approve that. We won't find out the answer to that question until about the 21st of June. Obviously, we've only got nine days to approve the budget before the end of the financial year. So we've had to prepare two budgets based on 0.7 or 2.3%. The bottom line for that is that if we only get the 0.7, what we've done to try and make it as easy as possible is simply said that that extra money that we would get at 2.3% will largely be spent on roads and there's some roads identified that might have that money spent on it. So it's trying to break it down as easy as possible because you pretty hard push to do a whole new budget if you've got two different amounts with only nine days before the end of the financial year. And it sounds pretty pointless for us to comment on that sort of thing because that's just something that's going to happen anyway. Uh, No, no, definitely not. If the community says, no, we don't want that rate increase and we send those submissions through to IPART to say the community support we've got or not got, then that will make a difference as to what happens there. So IPART is certainly looking at those submissions to see whether or not broadly across the community they're okay with the rate increase being at 2.3 rather than 0.7. 
right, those public comments finishing at five to nine. Uh, what's the easiest way to do it? Through the website, I guess. Yeah, just go on the website. If you go to the front page of dubbo.nsw.gov.au, have a look there. There's obviously information about the budget. There's information you can read about the budget. A lot of information there. Most people focus on the area that's important to them, and that's fine. So go in and have a look at those particular areas and make some comments there, and obviously send those through from the website there. So this is not only Dubbo residents, but for Wellington as well, or is there a separate plan for Wellington? No, it's the Dubbo Regional Council now. We're amalgamated. It is one big plan. Certainly there are certain parts of the plans that are specific to parts of Wellington and parts of Dubbo, money that might be being spent on certain areas of roads in those two areas broadly. But it is, and that's one of the jobs that I see very important for councils at the moment, is to make sure that we do have one big council. We don't want to keep hearing about the old Wellington LGA and the old Dubbo City Council LGA. We really want to focus on it being one LGA and how can we all work together as well as possible. Yeah, gotcha. Wellington Pipeline installation commenced last week. How long will this take? Yeah, not sure, actually. Uh, I probably should know that particular time frame, but it's a couple of months at least, I would suggest, that that pipeline's going to go for, the installation of that pipeline. And this is really to shore up those water supplies. There are bores down in Wellington, which is great, but those bores aren't accessible to where the water treatment plant is. So given the fact that there'll be another drought come along at some time in the near future, then we wanted to make sure that the water supply was, uh, or had the ability to keep getting good water supplies into the water treatment plant. Dubbo's already got that. We've got access to bores and the river. Wellington in the past has only been able to use the river, so we wanted to make sure there was water accessible to the water treatment plant there in Wellington. Again, trying to give those same standards to Wellington town residents as Dubbo town residents. So you can sort of mix and match if you need to during those real uh, drought events. Correct. It seems to be more expensive to treat bore water than river water. So when you've got the ability to take both, then you tend to prefer to take more from the river than you do from the bores. And Dubbo typically might sit at, say, 80% from the river and 20% from the bores. But when you've got low water flows from the river or when you've got the dam at very low levels, then we can ramp those bore levels up. Again, you might need to treat that water a little bit more so it might be more expensive to treat it. But let's face it, you'd prefer to do that than have no water for the community. $30,000 grant money shared across uh, multiple councils, including Dubbo Regional Council for the Food Organics and Garden Organics, what they're calling the FOGO curbside collection <laughs> service. How would that help us? It's really just about education. That's the that money, that $30,000 you talked about there, is really dedicated to just educating the public and making sure they get the right things in the right bins, essentially, because there's no good trying to have those food organics and the garden organics in a bin if it's mixed in with other things because then the ability to use that is diminished. So that's been identified by the state government as an area that's a problem. So councils across the state that have got a green waste bin, sometimes it's not being used to its full advantage because of other things being in there. And the information from the government says that it's not because people are mean and nasty, it's just because people don't know. So there's been money put out there for people to be able to be educated and that's exactly what our focus is with that. A few of us getting into trouble for putting plastic bags into the recycling. I know that um, there's stickers now that have gone on bins over the last six uh, to eight months. Has that always been the case or, or is this something new? Uh, the stickers that have been put on bins, I'm not sure if we've always used stickers, but we've always tried to communicate with the public if they've got it wrong in the bins. And again, there's not much point having three separate bins if people just mix and match as they see fit because obviously we want to do different things with them. Now, sometimes those processes don't work perfectly. Obviously, there was a bit of discussion some time ago about China not accepting any recycling from various places anymore. So sometimes some of those recycling bins just went into landfill anyway. So people say, oh, well, it doesn't really matter. What the heck? We'll just put whatever we want in whatever bin. But obviously what we need to do is be able to have the actual throughput of that uh, rubbish in those different bins coming through so that we can talk to various companies about how they might treat those different waste processes. So it is still better, even though you might think it's going to the same place at the moment. It may sometimes do, but if we've got those bins separated properly, we've got more chance of getting those treated in the way they should be treated. So it does my head in a little bit because why should I go and pay money at the shop to get those recycled uh, bags made out of recycled material if I can't recycle them? Yeah, well, what I'd encourage people to do is not get the bags from the shops that are recyclable at all. Just use your own cloth bags and keep going back to the shopping with those bags and bring them back home. So you use 
bags that you can keep reusing over and over. And that's really the idea of all those shopping centres charging for bags is it's only 15 cents, I think, for some of those bags. But just that small incentive is enough to change behaviour of people. And that's what we want to do. Out of time. Thank you, Matthew Dickerson, the Dubbo Region Mayor. Uh, anything else on your agenda this week, Pat? Uh, look, one thing really important today, we're having a luncheon for former councillors today. So former councillors from Dubbo Regional Council, Dubbo City Council and Wellington Shire Council. I've got all of them and some current councillors all going to a luncheon today just to see what we can learn from the past. And I think sometimes past councillors, they've got lots of knowledge, lots of information, they're in connection with the community, and once they're not a councillor anymore, we tend to ignore them and forget them. So I wanted to make sure that we stayed in touch with those people who are, have got great knowledge of council, but also still really connected with communities, and see what things they think in terms of where council is going at the moment. So I thought that'd be nice just to have a luncheon with those former councillors. So we're going to have about 20 people or so at the Cultural Centre today for lunch with those former councillors. Oh, very nice. Well, uh, I'm sure that'll be a great catch-up for you. Thanks for joining us here at Zoo Brecky and enjoy uh, that catch-up and we'll uh, talk with you, what, in a couple of weeks again? Yeah, two weeks time, Brett. All right, thanks very much. Matthew Dickerson there, uh, the uh, Dubbo Region Mayor. And always nice to catch up with Matt. I know that we had a great time over there saying g'day to each other, of course, uh, over at the Dubbo Show.